Photography is always art? Unfortunately not. But in this video you will learn how to turn your photographs into art and finally how to get out a masterpiece. After watching this video you will be able to produce your own artistry photographs by yourself. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. First of all, I'm super excited because I got onto a worldwide top list of landscape photographers recently beside lots of well-known photographers like Thomas Heaton, Nick Page and so on and I will tell you later a little bit more about that. Well, let's jump in. I got quite often asked about how to bring your photography into art and as I uploaded a video some weeks ago where I gave some really useful tips about my best photographs of the last 12 months, I got even more questions about this topic. I will link you the video down in the description. And what I found out is art history photography and art itself by the way is quite often misunderstood. For instance, I got lots of questions about which art filters are the best in Photoshop. But my friends, let's be honest, art can't be done with filters, right? Because it is not all about making your photograph just to look like a painting. I mean, this could maybe lead into an artist's look or into a painterly look maybe, but this really doesn't turn your image into art. Artistry photography is much easier than you might think and I will show you here now exactly what you have to do to bring your photography into art. But very important, before we will go into details on some photographs here now, let us find out what art actually is. So what is art? Well, let me tell you a little story here, what really happened by the way. It will explain very clear what art is and what not. As I was around about three years old, I think, I visited my grandparents. My grandfather was an artist, a painter, and he wanted to draw me and therefore it is obviously necessary to sit really, really quiet on a chair till the artist is finished. And I mean, I was free and yeah, I didn't really understand this to be honest. So there were so many things to explore in the world. So I always moved around and my grandfather tried to explain me that he wanted to draw me and showed me all his nice pencils. But I wasn't really interested in sitting quiet. I was much more interested in all his pencils to be honest. And finally it ended up that not my grandfather painted me, but I drew my grandfather. Again, I was free only. And I think to remember that my granny made one of her legendary hot chocolates. My grandfather had been so happy to have a picture of me, his grandchild, hanging up on the wall. So finally my dad grabbed his camera and took this photo of my grandfather with me. I still didn't want to sit quiet as you can see, so my grandfather had to show me where to look. A funny story isn't it? But now it gets interesting. Did there come out any artwork on that day? And the answer is yes. But what was the artwork? It was not a drawing of my grandfather. He didn't even draw me. It was also not a photograph of my dad. And I think you guessed it already. It was my drawing where I drew my grandfather. So why is this an artwork? And first of all, I created something new. And this is the first requirement of creative art. And then there's also the second requirement for a masterpiece in art included. The integrity of the artist. Yeah, it was my personal interpretation of my grandfather brought to a piece of paper. Yes, it's definitely not the best artwork in the world, obviously. But yeah, anyway, it's art. But what about the photograph my dad took? Why isn't it art? And now it gets really interesting. He didn't create anything new. It is not more than just a remember photo or maybe a documentary photo. But it is definitely not art and there is also missing the integrity of the photographer. It is, yeah, just a snapshot of reality. So my grandfather was an artist and a professor in art. He didn't get out an artwork on that day. My dad with his expensive camera back then didn't get out an artwork on that day. But I did. 
drawing of a three years old boy. So as a snapshot of reality doesn't lead into art, how can we anyway bring art into our photographs? And how do we get out even a masterpiece of art? Let me tell you a bit more about my grandfather. I mean, he was an artist and he studied how to get out an artwork. As he was in the beginning of 20, he was like all men in 1938 called up to the Second World War. Yeah, definitely a really bad time. But as he was an artist, so they fortunately didn't give him a gun, they gave him pencil and paper and he had to draw maps. And this gave him quite plenty time to engage with this horrible time back then and during the Crusades in Russia he had even time to paint. What's unimaginable, I mean, yeah, it was war. But as bad the war was obviously, it allowed him to understand and to reflect and even to interpret the war with all his paintings. His landscape paintings showed this kind of bittersweet contrast between beautiful nature and destruction. He engaged with the people living there and he started to express this mood of war in his paintings, in his landscape paintings as well in his portraits. And the quite interesting thing is, the paintings which he painted during the World War were totally different to everything he painted before. They brought his art even to the next level. And so finally he found out that emotions are the key for really strong artworks. But be careful here. Emotions alone don't make a masterpiece. It is the expression we need to bring our emotions into an artwork. And to be honest, it is not possible to bring emotions directly into your photograph. We can only express them over mood to evoke emotions at the viewers. And this is something that is also possible in photography. And very important, it also helps to create something totally new. It also helps to bring the integrity of the artist into the photograph. So finally, an artistry photograph is not just a capture of reality, it is a story that evokes emotions. And I think this is generally how I would define art. It is not a capture of reality, it is the story that evokes emotions. And here it doesn't matter if it is painting, photography, music or whatever. Well, what does this mean for our landscape photography? Let me show you some photographs. This is Dancing Ghost Tree. That's the title of the image. It is not a capture of reality only. Of course, there was fog, there was a tree, there was hoarfrost everywhere on the grasses. And even at the tree, I captured exactly this scene in reality. But this photograph is anyway an artwork for me. Let's have a look why. Well, there exists an old German psychological theory, what is quite well known as Gestalt theory. The word Gestalt is just a German word of fixture, so we could also say fixture theory to it, but it's international, really well known as Gestalt theory. And this theory contains more aspects in different areas of art, but the most important for us here now is the quality of the whole is different from the sum of the parts. A really strong sentence, isn't it? The quality of the whole is different from the sum of the parts. So what does this mean for this photograph? We have a nice tree back there, we have grasses there in the foreground, which gave us this white spooky mood and the connection to the hoarfrost on the branches. Fog in the distance blurs out the background, even the tree itself gets nicely soft and its shape look after a dancing tree. And these characters are the parts of the Gestalt theory. But it was not my intention to make this photograph nice and beautiful. It was even not my intention to take a capture of the moment. My only intention was to tell this story of a dancing ghost tree. The quality of the hull is different from the zoom of the buds. And this is how photography gets out for me. And this is why I often talk much more about the characters of my photographs instead of the subject only. The characters itself are not the most important thing. It is more important how they interact with each other. By the way, if you like this video, I would be really happy if you could give me a thumb up so that this video will get found also better for other photographers here on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Well, let's have a quick look at a couple of other photographs. The title of this image is Guiding Light, 
And the reason therefore is I hiked up around about four hours, steep a mountain and unfortunately I forgot my lunchbox so that I was totally out of power. And so it was also quite difficult to build up the composition to be honest. There broke always some light through the clouds and guided through the light I built up this composition. The characters are the light spot, the snow in the foreground, what is repeated in the midground and also in the distance mountains and also this subtle light in the foreground. It is a story about the weather conditions, what makes it to art. Yeah, I'm really happy with this one. Here another example for an art history photograph. It is not more than a tiny waterfall in a brook surrounded by wet rocks and this log wedged between the rocks. You can even see a bit of motion blur at the log as the rushing water moved around. The image title is Caught and also there the story makes it to art. Finally, artistry photography is not all about bringing your photos into a painterly style. The style itself is even not a needed requirement for art. The style is totally up to you. Artistry photography is finally all about creating something new, the integrity of the artist, evoking emotions in the viewers. And what I also think is it should be something intentional and not an artwork by accident or something like this. So when we break it down, if you want to take an artistry photograph, all you have to do is to tell a compelling story with just one single frame, your photograph. So if you want to get into artistry photography, don't ask anyone for a filter, ask yourself for a story. But independent from that, my friends, of course, if you have any questions about landscape photography, about art, composition or whatever, feel free to leave me your question down in the comment section below of any of my videos. Yeah, art history photography is not all about photographic style. It is really much more about the story itself. But anyway, I think the style and even the methods in composition are quite important to emphasize your story. But I think that will come in a own video about. By the way, if you're interested in composition, I made already a video with really useful tips about how to find a composition. I will link it up in the corner for you. As already mentioned in the beginning, I got onto a worldwide top list. I got featured by Feedspot and yeah, I'm really proud to be listed beside guys like Thomas Heaton, Simon Baxter, Nick Page and other really well-known names. I got an email that they appreciate what I do for the community of landscape photography here on my channel, that I share all my experience with my videos and yeah, finally I got considered on their top list. So thank you therefore. This is super cool. So if you're interested, I will link this list down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, I were really happy if you could give me a thumb up and yeah, share it with your friends on Facebook and Instagram and so give also your friends the chance to get into art history photography. I thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be. Stay with me and I have no doubt. You'll make a painting that makes you proud.